All right, so in the last couple videos, I talked about the uh, the 12 significance in the game on Saturday against Southern Alabama. But it made me want to go back and rewatch this play because number 12, um, Mangum came in with 12-12 left in the fourth quarter, and they started on the 12-yard line, but I remember it was really weird, so I wanted to come back and watch it. So there's 12-23 left um, when he kicks the ball. But when he actually kicks it, it's, I mean, it's really close to 12-21. Let's just watch it. It might be 12-22. I could be a little bit wrong, but let's Tyson watch it. Is a backup quarterback is All right, he kicks it at 12-22. But watch. The emergency he gets it on the 11. Runs it up to what? Run it back six yards. The 17, close Curry to it. Allen with the outstanding coverage for the Cornhuskers, a 49-yard putt by Brockmeyer with the wind at his back. Here's a look at the Pacific Life game summary. Sorry, let's we'll keep watching it here. He ran it up to the 17. He, ne he was never down. Nothing, right? It doesn't make any sense. So the ball should be up by the, like, the 16, 17-yard line. Trey Foster, the go-ahead score, his first career touchdown. But then, they bring it out here. Career catch. And now Taysom Hill, who went out of the game injured in the first half. And for some the reason, game. they walk the ball back to and the 12-yard line. The I still don't, I don't get it whatsoever. But look, 12-12, number 12 finally comes in, and they start on the 12-yard line. Now why? Why did they move the ball back? I'm, I'm so lost by that. If anyone could tell me. That would be awesome, but even so, just think of the significance. 12-yard line, number 12 comes back in with 12-12 left. I mean, that's some weird stuff. Okay, so let's watch it again. Maybe he fair catches it or something. Does not look like he fair catches it at all. It bounces even. Makes no sense at all. Nothing happened. Why would they bring the ball back to the 12-yard line? It makes no sense whatsoever. All right, so you saw it. Like, he didn't fair catch it. The ball bounced. He got it. He ran up here. They said a six-yard gain. And then watch. They just they walk it back to the 12. I'm so confused by that. They bring it to the 12. They bring in number 12 with 12-12 left. What? Anyway, um, number seven was the one who caught the ball on the return. His name was Micah Hanneman. I spelled it wrong there, but Micah, 34. Hanneman, 84. So, both interesting numbers. I've talked about it multiple times. But I guess the main thing I want to talk about, in the last video I talked about the nuclear power plant, and um, I thought of maybe destruction, but I also talked about how maybe it has something to do with um, a blackout. And then I thought about the Nebraska black shirts, you know. So um, the defense, the starting defense is called the black shirts. I, I, if you watch football, you know that. And occasionally, all of the fans wear black. So it would be a blackout. I even found this article from September 13th of 2003, or 13. Will Husker fans black out the Sea of Red? So the Memorial Stadium... They also call it uh, the sea, sea of Red. So we'll put it here, the Sea of Red or the Boneyard. So rarely do they wear all black. It's usually it's usually this. But um, just interesting, you know, maybe for whatever the reason, maybe on 926 they're going to have an article or they're going to do something where it's all the fans are supposed to wear black. That's my guess. I don't know. just kind of makes sense to everything that I've been researching. Maybe it won't happen, maybe it will. Just just a thought. It's also called the Boneyard. And uh, that's because, um, it even tells you down here. Oh, what the heck? This mouse is crazy. But um, it tells you down here. Um, let's see. Besides the black practice jerseys, which today have the players' names and number imprinted on them, the black shirts also have a black circle on the back of their helmet. These players will often cross their arms and an X across their chest, representing the skull and crossbones, a long-time logo for the black shirts. Interesting, they would be, you know, the skull and crossbones. It's even called 
Throwing the Bones. So let's check out the gematria of Throwing the Bones. Throwing the Bones. 85. Interesting. Also, let's just Black Shirts. Let's see what Black Shirts is. 41. Interesting. Uh, they just played USA. USA and regular and simple gematria. 41. I don't even know why, but Oh, 122, black shirts, 122, really interesting number. Even says, on October 16, 2007, the defensive players and coaches made a joint decision to remove the black shirts. The first player to remove his black shirt was senior captain Zachary Bowman, who felt he wasn't playing up to the standards of the black shirt tradition. Alrighty, let's check out Zachary Bowman. Born on November 18th, 1984, but November 18th, very interesting day considering they do the skull and crossbones, and November 18th is the 322nd day of the year. That is all about the skull and crossbones, the skull and bones, the fraternity or whatever. It's all about the number 322. So let's check out November 18th even more. 322. Now well, there's 43 days left, so very interesting. Look at his name in Gematria even. His name even adds up to 43 and 106. I mean, give me a break. There, Man, I really, I don't think it's going to be a bomb or an explosion. I, it's going to be a blackout. If, there, if anything, I don't know, they're foreshadowing maybe blackout from the stadium or maybe a blackout, like a real blackout, like... Um, losing power. I know I've seen a lot of other people talk about that and uh, just makes me wonder a lot now. It's really weird. Dude, seriously, there is no way this is not set up. I don't know how people do not see this and they think it's all crap and whatever. Read this. So, longtime sports information director Don Bryant credits much of Black Shirt Mystique to Coach Kelly. Uh, his name, his real name is George Kelly. Coach Kelly who was often heard yelling and exhorting the black shirts during practices and scrimmages. Eventually, the rest of the coaches began calling the top defensive units by the same name, and by the time Kelly retired and was, was succeeded by Monty Kiffin, the black shirts had become a widely recognized name for the Nebraska football defensive starters. So we got Coach Kelly, George Kelly, and also Monty Kiffin. Man, this trackpad is horrible. It does that zoom in thing, but hold on. Let's check out the names in Gematria here. George Kelly, Pythagorean Gematria, 59. George Kelly, Simple Gematria, 122. Monty Kiffin, the guy who replaced him and uh, completely made, made it black shirts known, 122. Also, 59. What are the odds of that? The odds of that are ridiculous. There is no way that wasn't planned. Whatever. I mean, I'm sorry, that, that is so ridiculous. And then on top of that, they're referring to them because of the black shirts, and black shirts is 122. So black shirts 122, George Kelly 122, Monty Kiffin 122. Give me a break. I mean, even, so they do the skull and bones, right? Skull and bones is 41, just like black shirts. Skull and crossbones, it's all about the number 322, skull and crossbones. The mirror, 223, even 61. Remember I said the word 34 adds up to 61 even. Even check this out. Um, so I, I talked about Hastings, Nebraska earlier in the previous video. Hastings, Nebraska, 60. Lincoln, Nebraska, 60. Oh, what was the other one? Can you remember Lonzo Steiner, the guy who Mike Riley uh, beat as the most career wins in o Oregon State? 60. And uh, wouldn't you know, Abraham Lincoln. 60. Give me a break. I mean, even the head coach at the time that they started calling him the Black Shirts was Bob Devaney or whatever. The dude died on 
five nine. That, that's all about black people, the Civil War, and kill. Even Pope Francis is fifty nine. Huge number. We've talked about it a lot, but let's look at his name in Gematria. His name adds up to forty one and ninety five. Forty one. Just like black shirts, just like skull and bones, and also 95. 95 is the mirror of 59. Just like the credit was given to George Kelly, and then it was taken over by Monty Kiffin. I mean, come on. No way. Even the day that that guy died, May 9th, 59, it even adds to 41. His name adds to 41. He died on a 41 day. Black shirts 41. I mean, come on. No way. Even 104, you take out the zero, that's a 14. The mirror of 41. And you know what? While I'm on the subject, we'll just go to Skull and Crossbones. You know, everybody knows it comes from Yale, whatever, the Secret Society of Yale. George Bush, John Kerry, everything else. Yale, 43. I mean, what are the odds of that? It makes sense because... November 18th, there are 300, and it's the 322nd day with 43 remaining. I mean, this coding has been going on for so long, and so many people are, like, just blinded by it. But even the skull and bones here, it talks about all these uh, fraternities, blah, blah, blah. Other fraternal groups also use skull and bones, crossbones, and their symbolism or their secret fraternal rituals. These groups include... The Knights of Columbus, as well as Knights Templar Degree of Freemasonry. So let's just look up Columbus. So I know I've talked about the Knights of Columbus before. You know, <laughs> most of these people, I don't think they know what they're into or whatever. But this is whatever. You know, the word Columbus, 106. I mean, that's a huge number this year. You got the first uh, Jesuit Pope, Pope Francis. I mean, Jesuit is 84. The word Templar, 85. I mean, how many times have we talked about that? And the word Knights. I only remember this from watching the movie A Kid in King Arthur's Court. And I looked up the word Knights because he became a Knight of the Round Table or whatever. Knights adds up to 88. Very significant. And also, wouldn't you know, 34. So, I mean, come on, it's just ridiculous. But look at the word of, just breaking these words down. Of, 12, and 21. I mean, come on. It's just so, it's so ridiculous. It's all connected. I mean, 12, 21, Abe Lincoln, Knights, 34, Abe Lincoln. Time travel, this is even Abe Lincoln, this is... I don't even know for sure. It's all about the Philadelphia train wreck, and there's a lot of other things that I've, I've mentioned, like Obama winking and whatnot. So it's all connected. It's so ridiculous. Uh, so I, whatever. I'm just going to end it here. I didn't even plan on making this video. I just thought of it after I made that last video. So um, anyway, it's like the, even 43 adds up to 59. I mentioned that multiple times in this video. 61 adds up to 41. Also mention that number. Um, and the word 34. 34 adds up to uh, 61 as well. And that's significant because, I mean, 34, 43 is all around Abe Lincoln. Uh, but 61 is the year that the Civil War began. I mean, it's so ridiculous. I even talk about prime numbers a lot. The word prime, 34. Also, 61. Even this place uh, where I talked about plutonium, and uh, in the last video I talked about how something to do, it was about the blackout. This place was the world's first breeder reactor to use plutonium fuel to generate electricity. So that's where I got the whole blackout thing from. But look what... 43 degrees north, I, it's in Idaho, Idaho is also the 43rd state, there's even stuff like Rowdy Piper who died on the 212th day of the year at age 61, RRP adds up to 52, 
Ronda Rousey won in 34 seconds the next day, but have